Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Hi, this is Ted Thomas. Welcome to the podcast. You don't know me yet, but most people refer to me as America's tax lien certificate and tax deed authority. And this podcast is all about making money and doing so in a secure and safe environment. On this podcast, you'll hear from many other people. They're all professionals. Some are coaches. Others will be people in my office. And later in the podcast, I will have a special guest. And that special guest this week is real estate expert and rent-to-own guru, Mr. Chris Prefontaine. Now, Chris is going to educate us. He's going to teach us about rent-to-own real estate and how his students earn $25,000, $50,000, up to $75,000. They have big-time paydays on just one deal. So keep listening, and you'll hear more about Chris towards the end of the podcast. I know why you're here. You want to know how to make money and not lose your assets. You want to do that quickly. I certainly understand that. And you want to look good to your friends and your relatives. So we'll make sure you can. I'm not going to hold back information. I'm going to explain this opportunity. And you'll see it's a very simple process. And if you're serious about making money, stay tuned. Because this is a 200-year-old system that's proven to work. And it works over and over again once you learn how to do it. So it's safe and it's secure. Of course, you're probably wondering, why you should listen to this guy, Ted Thomas. Who is he? So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. First of all, I'm an author and a publisher, but most of all, I'm an investor, and I've been doing exactly what I'm gonna teach you to do since 1989. I'm an in-the-trenches investor. In other words, I work at this. I make money doing exactly what I'm gonna share with you so you can do the same thing and just follow in my footsteps. I'm going to discuss and talk on this podcast and show you how to make money. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a very simple process. I'll even introduce you to other people, investors. Some of them are students of mine. Others will be men and women who have really done well in the business and they'll share their secrets with you. But the whole reason for the podcast is to teach you how to get checks from the government. Now, these tax certificates pay 16%, 18%, 24%, all the way up to 36%. It just depends upon which state that you're going to buy in. Now, later on, I'll show you how to make money with tax defaulted property, which are called tax deeds. So you're going to be able to make money in two ways, one with tax lien certificates and the other with tax deeds. Now, just so you know, I'm a no-nonsense guy who people can depend on. What I'll tell you is going to be real. Now, some of it you're going to find unbelievable. But this is a 200-year-old system, and it always works once you know how to do it. So you're going to decide what you like and what you don't like as I go along. Now, I can assure you, you're entering the world of making safe, secure money, and you're going to do that by investing directly with the government. Now, sometimes this is not so pretty. It's a business where you can follow. If you'll follow the directions, you're going to do just fine. Now, I'm going to assure you, I know guys don't like to follow directions. Women do that a little better than men. If you'll follow directions, you'll see that you'll be able to make money relatively quickly in this business. I'll give you lots of guidelines to follow. And I know it's easier for the women than it is for the men because we don't like to follow those directions. Okay, so let's get right into these tax lien certificates. First of all, they're issued by a local government. That could be a county, and sometimes it's even a municipality. Now, in the United States, they have over 3,000 counties and about 1,700 municipalities. For example, Los Angeles has a county government. Chicago has Cook County, which is a local government. Miami has Miami-Dade County. Each of these counties has the ability to tax the property. They're authorized to do that by the state legislature. Now, not all of the property owners will pay their taxes on time. Now, that's the problem for the county. So the county will take action if the property owner does not pay the taxes on time. The action they take, will they'll in half of the states, they'll issue a tax lien certificate. Now, that certificate represents a debt that's owed to the county. Okay. Now, sometimes it'll be a municipality. So we'll teach you how to know the difference. 
Now, when you purchase a tax lien certificate, what you've really done is you've purchased the debt from the government. You're actually paying someone else's taxes. Now, when you pay someone else's taxes, you really help that homeowner. How do you help them? They don't have to move out. They just have a tax lien certificate against the property, which means they're going to owe the taxes and a very high interest rate. Now, you'll also help the county. How do you help them? When you pay those taxes, you pay the county employees, and that helps the county pay all of the bills that the county has. Now, I'll come back in a minute, and I'll tell you about more of the bills that the county really has to pay. But keep in mind, the property owner still owns the taxes, but now they'll own the taxes and there'll be some kind of penalty. It'll be an interest rate of 16, 18, maybe even 24 or 36%. So when you pay taxes, what you do is you help the government and you help that property owner. Okay, so keep all that in the back of your mind. So this isn't a business where you're hurting anybody. It's a business where you're helping. For example, in Arizona, a tax certificate will pay up to 16% interest. Now, that's a nice rate. Compare that with a local bank. In Florida, tax lien certificates pay 18%. In Iowa, they pay 24%. I'm sure you're getting the idea. So it all depends upon what that state legislature decides. At this writing, banks are only paying 1% or 2%. It's a huge increase in how much money you're going to make if you do it with buy a tax certificate. My point is, there's lots of incentive to buying tax lien certificates, and the average guy, the guy on the street, doesn't even know these are available. Only a few people really know about this. So here's a quick review. When you buy a tax certificate, the local government makes it safe and secure. The interest rate is guaranteed. You get the same rate for the whole time you own the tax certificate. It's not like the bank rates that go up and down, and it's not like the rates that go up and down with the stock market. You'll always get the same rate of return. That property tax interest rate is outrageous when you think local banks are paying one or two percent. The local government is more than happy to sell you a tax lien certificate. It's big money investment once you learn how to do this. Now, I know it sounds unbelievable, but it's true. And the statutes, those are the state laws, in every state, in every county, will authorize tax lien certificates and also tax deed. So if you don't get paid, then that's the big challenge. So people ask me all the time, Ted, what if I buy a tax certificate and I don't get paid? I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't get paid, the local government is going to award you the property free and clear of all mortgages. Now, how about that? This is what you call wealth without risk. You invest with the county and you get a check back from the county. If you don't get paid, you're going to get a free and clear property. You've just paid the back taxes. That means you're going to get a free and clear property, listen to this, for 1% or 2% taxes are only one or two percent on a property and you just paid the taxes and if the people don't pay you you're going to get the property of course it sounds too good to be true but understand this system has been in place for over 200 years i understand when you start out you're going to be a little bit skeptical now i don't make the rules but i've studied the statutes and i can assure you the laws of each state will require that they issue either a tax lien certificate or a tax deed. So I hope you're starting to get this. Okay, the law is really simple. You'll get paid or you'll get the property. Now, many of my students and investors have been doing this along with me for 25 or 30 years. The system has been around for 200 years. So very soon it's gonna be your turn once you learn how to do this. Now, the system wasn't invented by Ted Thomas. It was invented by the legislature of the state and it's been in effect for, as I say, 200 years. As I move through the podcast, I'll give you some useful examples. and You can just follow along with me and you'll learn from those examples. Now, all of the states and the counties issue tax lien certificates or tax deeds. About half the counties will issue tax deeds. This simply means that the owners did not pay and the state is not going to wait. So they don't issue a tax certificate. The county government has bills to pay. Now, what do they do with the money? First of all, they pay the county employees. Then they pay the police department. Then they pay the fire department. If they've already paid those, then they have money to pay for the hospitals and to fix the roads and commit some money to the libraries. The point is the county has a lot of bills and they're going to be determined to collect those property taxes. All right. In half of the states, they'll issue a tax lien certificate. It's important that you remember a tax certificate 
will pay you 16, 18, 24, up to 36%. Okay, now here's the good part. The other half of the states, you're going to love this, the county will confiscate the property. In other words, they'll give notice to the homeowner and tell the homeowner, you owe taxes, you must pay them. They'll give them numerous notices of default. Those notices of default are legal notices. And the legal notice will say, if you don't pay your tax, they're going to confiscate the property. So the starting bid at those auctions, when they sell them, will be just the back taxes. So let's see if we can get this nailed down and make it simple. First of all, half of the counties will sell tax lien certificates. The other half of the counties will sell tax deeds. Now the counties that sell tax deeds, what they simply do is they give notice to the property owner who has not paid the tax. They'll give numerous notices and then they will confiscate the property. Now, believe it or not, they don't want the property. That's right, they don't want the property. What are they gonna do with it? They don't want property, they want money to pay the county employees and to pay the police and fire departments. So they confiscate the property, then they auction the property. They'll have a county auction, they'll auction the property for the back taxes, and when they auction for back taxes, there's no mortgage on the property. Now these properties are auctioned for 10, 20, and 30 cents on the dollar. So if the assessed value is 100,000, you could attend that auction and you could buy properties starting bid of 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents on the dollar. Now compare that with bank owned properties or foreclosures or whatever you're seeing on television or late night, no comparison. Tax lien certificates sell the taxes to you and me and we are in 18, 24, 36%. The other states will sell tax deeds and now you'll get a property for 10, 20, 30 cents on the dollar. At least that's where the bidding will start. That's a lot better than wholesale. So I bet you never heard about getting properties for 10, 20, and 30 cents on the property, and that's what we're talking about. You're probably not gonna believe this, but let me give you the example anyway. The treasurer in Los Angeles recently had over 2,000 properties to auction. Now this is what's called a deed state, so they're gonna sell a tax deed. So the starting bid at these auctions in Los Angeles was 10, 20, 30 cents on the dollar. In other words, the back taxes. These properties are sold with no mortgage. So that's pretty attractive to start with. All right, now I repeat that again and again, but you've got to get it. There's no mortgage on the property when they sell it at auction. So I have some students from Costa Rica, and this young woman started with me and wanted to learn online. So I taught her how to research the property online and she found a residential lot in the Hollywood Hills. Now this was no property other than a residential lot. In other words, there was no real estate built on this lot. And it was assessed by the tax collector for $210,000. So after researching that the title was clear with the exception of the taxes, my student investor showed up at the auction now, she only invested $14,000. Now, that's not a lot of money when you know that the property has a tax assessed value of $210,000. The bidding was such that no one outbid her. For $14,000, she bought a $210,000 property. That's a pretty good deal. She spent $14,000. Seven cents on the dollar, and here she was in a high-end subdivision. Now think about that. There was no fix-up to do because it was a residential lot. She could sell it to a developer, or she could build on the property. She could do it anything she wants. You're going to get a lot out of this podcast, I'll tell you that, because you're starting to see there's tax lien certificates, which pay you generous interest rates of 16, 18, 24, and 36 percent, and now we're talking about tax deeds. These are tax defaulted properties that the local government will sell and they don't want the property. So they're going to sell with starting bids of very close to the back taxes. It doesn't take long to become financially secure in this business, but there's step-by-step -step process that you have to learn. So I'll guide you through the process of buying tax lien certificates and tax defaulted property. So let's go back to those tax lien certificates. They're issued 
in half of the states. So I'm just going to use Florida as the example for the next few minutes. In Florida, they have many counties. There's over 50 counties. Each of the counties will have tax lien certificates that they want to sell. That simply means that there's hundreds of people in each of the counties that has not paid their taxes. As a matter of fact, in Florida, over the past three years, each year, they've had at least one million certificates to sell. Now, the maximum rate in Florida is 18%. Think about that, 18%, compare that with the bank. Now, as I discuss these examples, there's going to be many people that are going to be shocked that there's so many certificates. Yes, this is going to take a little research to find out which ones you want to buy. Now, you're not going to get rich quick, but you are going to get rich if you'll just stay with this process and learn it step by step. This is not a get rich quick deal. It's something that you're going to have to learn. This is going to require five to 10 hours a month of your time. And in many cases, you can do this from the comfort of your kitchen table because we can teach you how to do this online and we can teach you how to do this offline. It's going to be up to you. If you want a little bedroom in the back of your house to do your business, you can do that. Now, online, of course, is the fastest growing part of the business. Lots of people want to stay home and make money. So nationwide, there's going to be over 5,000 tax defaulted auctions, whether they're going to be for the actual property, which are tax deeds, or whether it's going to be for tax lien certificate. Now, these have nothing to do with foreclosures. Now, most people learn the system and they have to go through a little learning process. So you'll have to do the same thing. Now, if you're an eager beaver, just know that I have three-day workshops and you can attend those, any one of those. I do it about four times a year. At that workshop, you'll actually feel like you're getting hand-holding. And we actually do hand-holding and take people on auction tours so they can have someone sit with them next to them at an auction when they buy a property. Okay, so this online business is exploding. I'll give you an example of that. Kelly, who lives outside the United States, as a matter of fact, he lives in Regina, Saskatchewan, which is one of the big provinces of Canada. Now, he did his first property in Riverside, California. The distance between those two locations is about 2,000 kilometers, about 1,600 miles. So they're quite a ways apart, but he did it all online and he did his research online. Now, myself, I love Georgia. I think Georgia is my favorite state. And why? Because I can earn 30% in the second year. In Florida, I can earn 18% in my first year. I have a student by the name of Josie who lives over in Quebec City, which is no just north of Montreal, Canada, and she made 25% in 120 days in Texas. So you see, if you're getting the idea, there's plenty for everybody. My point is lots of opportunity and I'll cover it all, but I won't get it all done on this one particular podcast. Okay, let me get transition back again for the next few minutes and talk about the local government. Each one of the local governments has lots of bills to pay. Now, the schools are all funded by property tax. So if they can't collect property tax, if they couldn't collect it, they'd have to close the schools. So the government will be determined to either issue a tax lien certificate or issue a default notice and confiscate. They'll do one or the other, and they're going to act quickly, and they're going to do all this right at the municipal level. So you can find out what they're doing by researching at the local county. The local county will establish a list of all the properties that are coming up for tax lien certificate sales. They'll also publish a list of all the properties they're going to sell at tax deed auction. So just like you, others want to learn how to do this. So the person that learns how to research and follows a step-by-step -step process and learns the system is the one that's going to make the most money. Now, this can happen to you, and it can happen at any level you want. You can start with 500 bucks, or you can start with... $50,000. My point is, there's plenty for everyone. Sometimes the default notice is issued and the property's put on a list and no one pays any attention to it. So there's hundreds of these properties that will end up on the list. It's not unusual to see 20,000 tax lien certificates for sale. It's not unusual in Dade County to see 50,000 certificates available. It's not unusual in Cook County, Chicago, to see 100,000 certificates available. My point is, 
This is a business of abundance. Now, I mentioned a few minutes ago in Los Angeles, one of the most wealthy counties in the United States, there was over 2,000 properties at auction, and my student bought a property for seven cents on the dollar. Now, I'm going to tell you, getting one for seven cents on the dollar is not normal. However, many properties will be sold for 20 and 30 cents on the dollar. Now, I'm going to run out of time because I have so much to do on this podcast. In just a few minutes, I'm going to bring one of my coaches on and we'll give you some foundational material as we go back and forth and banter with some questions. But right now, I want to take you back to the mortgage crisis, which took place in the early 2000s. And we ended up with massive failures and massive foreclosure nationwide. This is not that business. This business was stable during that time. Tax lien certificates is a stable business. It's this, almost the same every single year. It's the same with tax deeds. So this is not foreclosures. It has nothing to do with banks. These are properties that are all sold at the local county level. It's got nothing to do with the banks. It's got nothing to do with financial institutions. These are county properties that are sold at auction. So the people that want to buy these properties are people that are investors. The people that I teach are investors. Many are young women. We have career women that do this. We even have grandmothers that do this. If you're a person that wants to do fixer-uppers, yes, you can find those. But most people, that we teach them to buy them and then quickly sell them. So you can find good properties for 20 30 cents on the dollar that you can resell for 50 and 60 cents on the dollar and make money. We're in the business of buying and quickly reselling these properties. That's what we teach. We don't teach people to fix fix up properties. Forget about all those television shows that you're seeing the people fix up the property. That takes months and it's nonsense. It'll cost you thousands of dollars. Not a good business to be in. Let's buy these properties for 10, 20, 30 cents and then let's sell them for 50 and 60 cents on the dollar. This is a good business for a person that wants to make money. It's a money business, not a fixer-upper business. Now, the government advertises these auctions, but most people have no idea that they're being advertised. So we're going to talk about that more in depth on another podcast. But understand, every county will have tax deeds to sell. About half the counties will have tax lien certificates to sell. Now, I figured this out by reading the statutes and studying and practicing. This took me many years. It's only going to take you months to learn how to do it. Understand tax lien certificates are a safe, secure investment, and you can do this for the rest of your life by investing with the government and getting a check back from the government. The tax defaulted auctions are big money deals. This is where you buy for 10 and 20 cents on the dollar, and then you try to sell and make yourself 25 or 30 cents. You try to make yourself 25,000 or $50,000 on one deal. Now, if you get this right, You're going to change your whole financial situation in a very short period of time. Now, some of what Ted has been talking about in this episode can seem a little overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. If you go to tedthomaspodcast.com, you can read the show notes for this episode. Ted wants you to be successful, so he is providing you with two videos. One is specifically about tax lien certificates, and the other is about tax defaulted properties, which are called tax deeds. Again, just head over to tedthomaspodcast.com and you can read more about this episode or others and get the tools you need to start earning secure, reliable income. Next, I'm going to transition to a different learning format, which I'm sure you'll enjoy. I'm going to take you inside and you'll hear me with an experienced certified coach discussing tax liens and deeds. It's a little different, but it's me talking with another player. My coaches are people who attended dozens of tax defaulted auctions and they make their money by buying for pennies on the dollar and then selling quickly for high profits. When you're ready, they'll help you do the same thing. I'm Ted Thomas. Hi, I'm Bill Williams and I am sitting here with Ted Thomas. Ted Thomas is an expert on buying property at a significant discount from the government and also getting a high rate of return, much higher than you can get from banks, from the government. So, Ted, welcome to the podcast. Okay, thanks. So why don't we talk about tax lien certificates? That'd be fun. There's a lot of people, probably most people listening to this podcast, have never heard of buying a tax lien certificate. They don't even know what it is. And how can you get a high rate of return from the government? 
government isn't here to pay us money. They're here to take our money, aren't they? Yeah, they take the money from the client anyway, but I'll, I'll explain that. So first of all, a tax lien certificate is uh, nothing more than a piece of paper, and uh, local government issues those certificates when property owners don't pay their tax. So first of all, all the private property in the nation is private property in the nation is taxable. In other words, a shopping center, office building, and of course, homes, millions and millions of homes. And uh, a certain amount of people have crises in their life, so they don't get their taxes paid. So the local government will issue a tax lien certificate. Now, that certificate has a lot of value to someone that's an investor. So first of all, the certificate's a piece of paper issued by the government, and it pays a high rate of interest. Now, the interest could be 16%, 18%, 24%, all the way up to 36%, depending upon which state. So half of the states in the United States will sell tax lien certificates. Anybody can buy them. You can start with 50 bucks. You can start with 5,000 or 50,000. There's all different shapes and sizes, so to speak. All right, so that tax certificate, once it's issued, you take the certificate because you bought the certificate from the government. So uh, the certificate is a certificate that's going to pay a high rate of interest. So the government auctions off those certificates when you buy one, it's that piece of paper. You just take it home. You put it on your desk. You can put it in your safe deposit box, and you just wait. There's no work to do. You don't have any property management or anything like that. All you did is you paid someone else's property taxes. That means the government will not foreclose, at least at that point in time, on that individual because you paid their taxes. So you're already being pretty benevolent, and you're helping somebody. But you're more than helping the government because the government – now has money to pay for the schools, the government employees, pay the police department, pay the fire departments, and actually contribute some money to fixing the roads and helping people at the hospital and so on. So property taxes are a tax that's local. If they can't collect it, they're going to issue a tax certificate. When they do that, they put them on a list and people can go and buy them off the list and people can go and buy them off the list and earn a generous rate of return of 16, 18, 24, and even 36% on the certificate. Depends upon the state. So to better understand this, can I look at that as if it were something like a municipal bond? Oh, sure. It's it's just a government certificate, and it's going to it probably a little better than a municipal bond because they pay about 3 or 4%. Uh, these things pay really high rates of return. And if what happens if the delinquent taxpayer pays off those taxes? What do I get? two things uh, we should talk about. One is if the delinquent taxpayer doesn't pay the tax, you're going to end up with the property that you bought the tax certificate. You're going to own that property without a mortgage. The government will award you that property because the government doesn't want any more property. So that's the incentive for that person to come and pay their taxes. And so that the listener knows 97, 98% of all tax certificates are paid off within 24 months, are paid off within 24 months. So I could get that property for just the back taxes, a few thousand dollars maybe? Exactly. It happens every day. If they pay it off, I get all my money back plus interest, right? You, you either get paid or you get the property. It's, it's overly simplified. So how do I find these properties then? I, I didn't know about it until I heard from you. The big challenge is that because our government's the way they were created at the county level and uh, the counties only advertise in their county – that they have those certificates. So there's over 3,000 counties and about a little less than half of them sell tax lien certificates. The other half sell tax deeds, and we'll talk about that on another podcast. But right now, the half of the counties that sell tax lien certificates, they do that at the county level. So you could call the county and ask them for a list, and they would give it to you. Once I find out where to get the list, how, how do I research? How do I look at that list? Search, how do I look at that list? Let's say you got the list just off the internet, so you did it at home. A lot of people never leave home to do this. What you did is you, you got a list. Now, the list is not a, a whole bunch of pictures like a real estate broker is going to say. The list is just going to be numbers. Like you have a social security number. A property has a assessor's parcel number or a folio number, whatever they call it in that state. So that number, the tax number of that property is on the list. So now you have to take that number and put it into the, to the county database, and then it'll tell you what that property is. So you're going to have to do a little bit of work. You're going to have to, all the county's going to do is make a, oh, they'll fill up a newspaper with 20, 25 pages of all these numbers. And you just look, go to that number and you can look up the property. 
But then if it's available online, and I understand most counties are today, I can just click on that whatever property I'm interested in and get all kinds of data right online without having to go further, correct? Right online without having to go further, correct? Oh, you could sit on your rusty dusty there at home and you could uh, know that it was a three bedroom, two bath. You could see the street that it's on. You could probably go on a Google trip up and down the street if you wanted on Google Maps. So I can know pretty much everything I would need to know about a property by researching it online about it when I'm looking at tax lien certificates? Oh, absolutely. I have young mothers do this. I have career women that do that. I have career men that do it. They just do this on a part-time basis. They come home at night and then they research tax certificates and they never leave home. That sounds like a pretty interesting way to make a good rate of return. And oh, and it's not only a good rate of return, but it's predictable, it's certain, it's secure. And these are government-issued certificates, so only two things can happen. You're either going to get paid or you're going to get the property. It's one or the other. Now that I've found some that I might be interested in, how do I buy these things? In most cases, the county will auction them themselves. Sometimes they'll have a, a company like they'll have a, a company like Bid for Assets or something like that do it for them. So there's co companies that just sell these tax certificates. You can go to them, go to the county, and the county will say, all right, we're having the XYZ company do it or we'll have our auction on a certain day. They'll publicize the day, and you can go there, and you can bid online. We actually have classes where we teach people just to bid online. They never leave home. Can anybody bid on these? Yeah, if you got 50 bucks, you can buy one. That's all it takes. They don't, the government doesn't care who you are or where you are. All they care about is that you'll pay. Give me an example of a state that sells tax lien certificates and how the process works so that uh, if I want to invest there, what do I have to do? Okay. About half the state sell them. So let's pick a couple. Uh, if you went to Arizona, for example, let's use Maricopa County. That would be Phoenix. They'll have anywhere from 18,000 to 35,000, it depends upon the economy, of how many certificates they have available. And they'll publish a list. They do it in the newspaper. They'll do it online. And you can look up that property. And now you know what it is. And they'll tell you what the tax is. And they'll tell you what the delinquency is. And so they'll allow you to buy it right there online. That's pretty efficient. So I can buy tax lien certificates in Arizona and live in New York and never leave my home in New York? You can do it if you live in Singapore or Tokyo or Bangkok or Paris, France. You can do it online from anywhere in the world. So I don't even have to be a U.S. citizen to do this? They don't even care. All they care about is that you have the money to pay for that certificate. State of Florida, to give you an example the last three years, they've had at least one million certificates available every year available for sale, and Florida pays all the way up to 18%. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm back, and this is the really important part of the podcast today. I promised you'd get to meet Mr. Chris B. Fontaine. Now, this is special because not only is he a family guy, he employs not only his son-in-law, his daughter, his wife. He's got a whole team of people. This is a nice family business, so hopefully he'll tell us a little bit about that. Now, Chris, I want to get right into this of how you, you talk about terms with property, how you buy a property, how you sell a property in terms. But can you include in your presentation somewhere along the line, my people like to know, what does it take to be successful in business? So you don't have to start there, but start with uh, kind of integrate that so people understand that you're unique and you're an entrepreneur and you're like me. I've had some classic failures and I know you had some little bumps in the road. You don't have to bring that up too much, but we've all been there so you can bring it up if you like. So Chris, let's start right out with, tell me about buying and selling property on terms. Sure. And, and awesome, as always, to be talking with you, Ted. And, and you can you fill in the blanks or ask me anything you want in between. But as far as terms, it, it could be a broad word, obviously. We buy without using a bank, without worrying about if we have good credit or not, and without our cash, other than maybe a $10 deposit. So what does the terms mean? We buy only on lease purchase or owner financing primarily. And the third way is Sometimes we'll buy it subject to the existing mortgage staying in place in the seller's name. So just 10,000 foot view, lease purchase, uh, you have a home, uh, whether you have some equity or no equity, you've got an underlying mortgage. I'm going to take over that mortgage payment. I'm not going to assume the loan. It's going to stay in their name. I'm going to make the mortgage payment. I'm going to then put my buyer in there. It's a tenant buyer on a rent to own. And I'm going to keep the difference. I'm also going to guarantee them that they don't have to worry about their maintenance or anything else. So they're not dealing with a renter. They're dealing with me and they're dealing with a definitive date that they're going to be cashed out on or before. The, oh, so this is a way for a guy to sell his house to you. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. And people say, why would they do that? Why? Because about 20% of the market right now can go get a loan. You're dealing with a small pool of buyers and we got, we got access to the other 80%, depending on what your market you're in, it varies, but that's a rough number. So yeah, it's a way for them to lock in. If they have any equity, lock in all of it. So if they owe 200 and the house is worth 220, I'm going to give them 20 grand at the end of the term. But in the meantime, I benefited from the principal pay down and they love it. They just know they're getting the 20 grand at the end of the deal. That's the least purchase side of things. I see. Okay, good. My clients are buying at these tax auctions. It's all cash. If they don't have cash, they can't buy. You've got to either have cash, credit card, or bank drafts and things like that. So you can actually do a lot of business without, in other words, I could be doing business learning your stuff by uh, not having any money. But yeah, and that's why I think, and you and I know this because we're always talking and, and giving each other referrals because we're in different niches, but they work phenomenal together. So you go do a deal, it doesn't take you any cash. You got, an, you got some extra cash, you fix your credit up a little bit, then go do some tax liens. It's just a great fit for both of us. Yeah, it works, works, works perfectly. Okay, good, I like that. So you actually buy houses and from people and you call that a lease option? Is that what you call that? Yeah, lease purchase because an option okay. implies that you may or may not. I want these sellers to know, look, you're not going to worry about this in three years. I'm going to get it done. And uh, when I said on a financing, Ted, I know you and I both know after the years of doing this, there's all kinds of meanings to that. Here's what it means when we say owner financing. It uh, means that we're buying your property as the seller has nothing owed. It's free and clear. So those are the ones that we target for owner financing. Why? Because I can pay them full price or even a premium depending on how far out in the term they'll go because I'm paying them principal only, always, never interest. So if they want to go out longer in the term, I can pay them a few extra dollars up front more uh, because, not up front, sorry, on, the, on top of their price more because I'm paying them every month principal anyway. It's going down drastically. Okay. Now, what we better do is we better back up and tell people who you are, how you got in this business, and why you got in the business. Sure. So I've been at this for 27 plus years or so. And so I'm, I know I'm dating myself slightly there, but I started in the early 90s. I started doing single family homes. And interestingly enough, not knowing that I was going to be in the terms business later on, we built these homes, Ted, without taking on a bank loan, without having to pay subcontractors and without paying for the land until the home was sold and built and cashed out. And then everybody got paid. It was really cool. So no overhead, no bank loans. We wow. did that in the 90s, mid 90s till 2000, bought and built and sold a realty executives franchise. So I had my kind of my realtor hat on during those years for five years. And then from 2000 on, I've been coaching people throughout US and Canada and doing my own investments. And unfortunately, during that, you mentioned mistakes earlier, the 2008 debacle slapped me around pretty good financially. And, but that caused us to do what we're doing today. So the whole thing uh, is for a reason, as I always say, and that made us re-engineer how we buy and how we do business. Now, what does it take to be successful in a business anyway? What does it really take? Here's what I say to everyone. I don't care what, I don't care if I'm on a real estate show, a general business show, it doesn't matter. You could be selling popcorn. This will work. It, it is simply this. Find a niche inside or outside of real estate. doesn't matter. So a niche means what? Okay, if I want tax liens, you're the guy. So right. find a niche, then within that niche, find a person that is still operating like you do, like I do. Yeah. And then if you can relate to that person, then go ahead and link up with them, meaning have them be your mentor. Now, I know that sounds, I just gave like a simple watered down example, but if you truly do that in any business whatsoever on the planet and you put the blinders on for three years now with that mentor, you'll be hugely successful. The, the problem is most people, you see the late night commercials and everything else they see and they commit to something, for they try it, quote unquote. It's not going to work. What, once you figure it out who you want to be with and they're still active in the market, not 20 years ago active, then you got something you can bet on. You put the blinders on, you listen to everything they say, even if you don't agree, and you go at that for three years. That's my opinion of making it in any business. So a coach and a mentor makes a big difference in whether you're going to be successful. That's what you really said. Yeah, I can look back. Uh, I don't think I've told you this. I can look back to the two times I got slapped around. One was 08 and one was like 94-ish, 1994 ish And I look back to those two times, I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have any board of directors or a mentor or a person that I could go to and go, hey, I'm having this challenge. What do I do now? If I did, I probably would have come out of that differently. And yeah. every other time I've had one. You're so absolutely right. Now, I went through it in 1986, 20 years before you did, or 30 years before you did, but it was a real challenge. I was up to $200 million worth of property in three states, and now the recession hit and the market collapsed. Those buildings actually lost 60 to 70 
uh, they were all apartment buildings. They, they lost 60 to 70% of their value. And I had no one around me that ever knew how to handle adversity. So how are you going to learn adversity? Well, you learn it on the firing line, but I ended up in a bankruptcy and lost it all. So I completely understand. Now I'm in the tax lead deed business because I'm out of the risk business. I don't want any more risk anymore. So I got in that business. Okay, well, this is really interesting to hear talk about uh, being in business. Uh, tell me a little bit about the family thing, how that works out. And I, I know business has challenges. How does that work out with the family? Yeah, no, good question. Everyone, every, almost every show people want to know, okay, come on, there's got to be good and bad with that. Here's how it happened with us. It, it's rather different because I was doing my thing after the debacle and kind of reestablished myself and buying on, selling on terms. And then around 2014 summer, Nick, my son was a realtor and he saw what I was doing. We shared an office and, he, and I said, geez, could you just help me with some marketing with the buyer side of this thing and find me some tenant buyers and here's how I do it. And maybe you can get a better way. And so he started doing that part-time with me. And sure enough, I got real busy. He took over full-time being the buyer specialist. And that worked out great. So it just organically happened. And then end of 15, beginning of 16, my daughter Kayla and my son-in-law Zach were in the hospitality business because in Newport, Rhode Island, you have tourists and all kinds of activity in the summer and they make good money, bartending, waitressing. So they did that. And then they finally got a little tired of that and said, maybe we could join the business. I said, sure. But there's no such thing as there's no salaries here. There's no, there's none of that. There's no free lunch. So I said, if you guys want to come in and we'll, I'll train you and from scratch in, in Zach's case, and he had no background in real estate and you want to go ahead and do this on a per deal basis. We all win when we win and we all don't win if it's slow. So they did. And long story short, everybody fell into their own role. It wasn't even stated ahead of time. So Kayla became more of the manager and is very organized in the office and Zach kind of replaced me in the field and Nick handles buyers. It just worked out great. And the synergy, the trust, the work ethic is just over the top. And so here we are today, several years later, and uh, they're running a great show. I couldn't do it without them. There's no question. And we're helping people all over the country now because they're with me. Give me some perception. How, how big a business is it? Do you do a deal every month or do a deal every week or how does that work out? We do between our own deals in Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. And uh -huh. then we call our students TED Associates around the country that we actually do deals with and we revenue share with them. So with all of their deals and our deals, we're doing anywhere between five to 10 a month. Like this month of March, we did, I think it was 11 deals. So it's an awful lot of deals, but what's cool is we get it from all angles. We get it from our own deals. We get it from the student deals. And so our fingers on the pulse all the time. And I can't, you and I talked about mentors, but I can't stress enough this in real estate, if you have someone that's not in the trenches, you have someone that's not up to date on tax liens, you're going to get in trouble. So it's the same in our business. You got to have someone that's up to date on it. Okay. So what's the most, what's the most exciting part of the business? Is it buying of these properties or selling the properties or the whole thing? Where does it, where's the exciting part? That's a good one. I love the buy because that sets up the whole profit structure, but, oh, yeah. but there's nothing better than getting to the selling stage and collecting the checks. We, we create three paydays every deal, meaning we get money right away and then we get money over time and then we get money when it cashes out. So it's just that part I can't tell you is not exciting, but it all starts when we buy. So the whole, I, I couldn't tell you that one's more than the other. I, li I like it the whole process. Okay, now hold on a second. You're talking about three paydays. Real estate's only got one payday. How can you have three paydays? That's more, yeah, that's most of the time. So you're talking about a wholesale deal or a rehab. That's all they get paid on. We do this. When I, I said earlier, we put a tenant buyer in the home while they're getting mortgage ready. When they go in the home, they're going to put money down or all I have is a glorified tenant and nothing against tenants, but I don't want a tenant. I want a buyer that just needs more time. So we get a non-refundable down payment. That's payday number one. And then right. remember, we talked about lease purchase or owner financing. Well, I'm paying something to the seller or the mortgage holder. The difference between what that and what I collect from the tenant buyer, three, four, 500, sometimes as much as a thousand a month, that's payday two. So you set up a cash flow stream right away and you didn't put any money down. And then you have a back end, which is going to be comprised of the markup in the home and also all of the principal pay down that occurred during the deal. So those are your three paydays that we average 75 grand per house, all three paydays. And how long does it take to make that 75 grand? Two years, five years, one year? A real typical for us is 24 to 36. That's the kind of the norm. Do we get the occasional buyer that's on their game and organizing cashes out and like 11 or 12 months? It's occasionally happening. Do we have also people that trip up a little bit, life happens to them, they need four or five years? Yeah, but the norm is around two or three years. 
Okay, now anybody that's on this podcast that kept up with you with all that has to be a genius. So now you've got to take <laughs> me back and tell me who invented this thing and then how you evolved and did it. And so give me a couple of minutes and then just take me through, baby step me because I've never seen three paydays. And if you got three paydays, I want to know more about this. Uh, do you write a book? Do you have a special report or something? I'm going to need something to guide me. Yes, you are. So I'll do this so I don't forget. I'll give all your listeners, all I got to do is say they heard you and I talking. They, they can go to, I'll give you a URL. It's free, F-R-E-E, and then the letters S-R-E-C. So that stands for Smart Real Estate Coach. Free, S-R-E-C book. Dot com and they'll get our best our Amazon bestseller real estate on your terms now Ted when I say free I don't mean one of those things where you get on and then you got to put your credit card in and then you got to pay eight bucks in shipping I'm saying we'll pay for shipping we ship out and you Whoa. if they say they're on the show they'll get the book for free Wow, oh, gee, that's good. Okay. All right. So Mr. Smart Real Estate Coach, take me through that step-by-step -step process again, because three paydays sounds like a big deal to me. All right. So let's use the example we talked about right at the beginning when we talked about a, a lease purchase. And I think I was using a number of about 220 grand. So if I tie up a home with a seller for 220,000 on a lease purchase, just to use round numbers again, because math is a little bit easier for me doing it verbally, I'm going to put it on the market for a tenant buyer, rent to own, for let's say 240. I see. Now, the tenant buyer is going to come in with a down payment somewhere. We want to get them to 10% eventually, but sometimes it's up front. So somewhere between 7 and 10%, they're going to put down. So I know they're a buyer, not a renter. When they put that, let's say 10%, again, round math. Okay, they're going to put down 22,000, 24,000 then in that example I gave. Okay. That is payday number one. That's Great. not, I'm not a real estate broker. That's not escrow. That's a non-refundable down payment that goes in my bank account. Nice. That's payday oh, number one. Nice. Now, the mortgage on that $200,000 uh, house might be, let's just call it $1,500 again for round math. I'm going to charge the tenant buyer for round math, $1,800 or $2,000. Now, that's net spread though, because that tenant buyer is going to do what with the house? They're going to act like, behave, pay for like they own it. So that means they're going to maintain it. They're going to pay the taxes. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just going to collect the difference between the two payments. So that's payday number two. But that's for the life of the, the whole term. That's pretty cool. Oh, okay. And then payday three is when? Payday three is, you asked about the term. Is it two? Is it four? So whenever that term ends or before, then the payday three comes and it comes as a result of, remember, they bought it for 240. They put 25 down. So they still owe 15 grand difference between what I bought it for and what they owe me. It's another 15 there. But I also paid the mortgage payment that whole time. There was some principal pay down in that depending on what kind of loan it was. Call it a couple hundred dollars a month. So I'm going to get that at the end on payday three as well. This is so exciting. People go to these real estate conferences and our late night television, everybody gets rich quick. Uh, you're not talking about that. You're talking about making money over a period of time. And uh, who invented this? Did you invent this or create it? Uh, how many of these deals have you done? It sounds like I, a miracle. Yeah, no, I wish I could tell you I invented it. But I, I was telling someone recently, I was reading a book recently on vacation and it was, God, I wish I had the name in front of me. It was some, it was in the late 1800s. It was a wealthy real estate guy. He was doing lease purchase in the late 1800s. I was blown away. So oh it's not like I invented it, but what I did do is I, with the team is I wrapped a system around it for the payday one, two, three, and for the systems to get it done and how to do it. But of course it's been around forever. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This is amazing. And I asked you earlier, what does it take to be successful in business? And you answered it. So you're on the, on a vacation and you're reading a real estate book to improve what you're doing. So yeah, I get it. So do you work 24 seven? How often do you work? I, no, I don't. I, I like to refresh every now and then. So every yeah. quarter or so, we, when I say vacation, we'll go ahead and rent the house somewhere and, and take off and shut down. But when I shut down, I, I love to read and, and yeah. get audibles for the, for the books on, on audio. I, I think everybody that is successful is a big reader. That's the way you get it. That's a great story. So what do you call this uh, system? Do you have a name for this thing or what? No, we just, our book is called Real Estate on Your Terms because oh. you get to design it. You get to okay. pick what you work with. And it's just like your stuff, Ted. If someone says to me, I don't know, I don't know if I can convince people or sell people. Look, it's no different than you going to an accountant or an attorney or an auto body shop or a dentist. Why do you go there? You go there to fix something or to create a solution to something. It's not always a bad thing, but you're trying to fix something. And so that's all we do. We just provide solutions. Okay. So you're the smart real estate coach. I like that. How long does it take the average person to, to learn how to do this and maybe make their first deal? 
Yeah, this is a good one because I think there's too many people, I said on TV earlier, but they're just out there and they're selling stuff and, and it's yeah, not helping people yeah. do deals. It's, we tell people this, Ted, we say, look, you may luck out and you may get a deal in 30 days, but don't count on it. Count on six solid months. We're seeing that it takes people like 90 days to the switch goes off and they go, I'm getting it. And then another three months for them to actually do a deal. So it's very common for our students to start really hitting it after the six month point. And, but who cares? What 75 grand a deal? What if it was half that and you took your six months? Who cares? Listen, you can't learn how to be a mechanic in uh, no. 30 days. How are you going to learn how to, you, know, you don't learn a computer. It takes years. They, go, they start in the fourth grade now with a computer. It's unbelievable. Earlier. So, <laughs> yeah, earlier. So there you go. So it, it takes a little. All right. So you have coaching teams that do this or do you, all that, do you do all that yourself or does your team help with that? The actual coaching, it's just like our business. So this is interesting too. So just like right now, when a deal is, is brought into the business, it's brought in by myself or, or Zach, our own deals my son a lot. And then when it gets sold, that's handled by my son, Nick. And the paperwork is handled by Sue and so on and so forth. It's the same with the students. So if the students are being coached, they're being coached at the front end to, to get deals by myself and Zach. And then when they get a deal, they're jumping on the phone with Nick right away and they're getting a really clear on how they're going to get this thing sold and get a check in their pocket. And then if they need admin help, they're going to Sue or the staff. So it's the exact same way we do deals. We pass it along to them. Wow, how nice is that? So they're learning from doers, not from people that are just teaching it, which is, believe me, I'm a big advocate of that. All my coaches have to be doing deals. If they don't do deals, forget it. Talking about it is not what counts. Getting in the trenches and getting slapped around a little bit makes yep. a, quite a difference in how you do things. No, right, I know so you take, do that. That's why I love, we, we're yeah. always comparing notes because you and I operate the yeah. same way in that respect. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, even any of my classes I do, I have the coaches teach the class as much as I do so that their people know who they are and what they're doing and so on. But anyway, let's, let's take you back a little bit because this is a blank slate. So the person said, gee, I like to making three or three paydays. So now I've got this blank sl sl slate in front of me. What are the three things that I should write down that you want me to take away from this and remember because I want to get to that and then we're going to get back into to how you did some deals. Okay. So what are the three important things or maybe there's five that you think are important for a person to remember? I To start off, they got to know they can do it, right? Because people might say, well, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can in my market, blah, blah. So you got to know they can. And then I would say do everything you can for free to, to dig in and do your due diligence. So what does that mean? That means the book we gave you, that means you can go on YouTube for free and, and subscribe and say, I'm going to watch these deals. Like I'm going to watch these guys do a deal every week. We release one. It's real. It's live. It's on a whiteboard. So you get to see all that. And then there's a free webinar. If you can deal with listening to me for an hour, that way for a few hours, several hours, you can just suck this stuff up for free. Decide if that niche is for you. And if it is, let's chat. That's it's very simple. It goes along with when you said, what do you do to be successful? Same process. I love it. All right. Now take me through a, an average deal or just to give me an example. I uh, was fortunate enough to be able to come to your event and you had, oh my goodness, you had dozens of people, maybe at least a dozen, come up to the front of the room and say, hey, guess what? A year ago, I was uh, floundering around doing whatever, but they actually kept their job. All those people kept their job and they did this sort of like part time because they were like everybody, a little bit timid. They didn't want to just jump in the pool and start swimming. So take me through a, an average client that makes these three paydays and maybe makes, what do you think would they make? $50,000, you think, over the uh, three we, paydays? They range. So we're coincidentally in the average of them. When I say we're at 75000 with our team, so we have a, I'll go from each extreme. We have one client out in Arizona and she's averaging around 45, all three paydays. And then we have one out in DC who happened to go full time. Yeah. And he is uh, one of the few that did. And he's at around 110 per deal simply because of the price ranges out there. So we run, that's a wide range, 45 low, 110 high. And we happen to be in the middle. And that, oh. again, that's taken them a good six months to get to the point where they're putting their first deal under contract. And then, of course, that's going to take a year or three or four to cash out. So mm -hmm. they get paid as they go. All right. Now you look at people in your events and you look at them when you're doing business with them. What are you looking at? What do you, you can see success. You can tell me what it's going to, what kind of, per, who is this for? Is this for anybody or is this for a certain person or who shouldn't do this? Yeah, we, this is great too, because we do this by application only and not only application, oh. but when the application comes in, they get a call from each one of the family members because we want to make sure they fit in the smart 
the, we call it the Wicked Smart uh, community, but Wicked Smart Investors, we want to make sure they fit in the community because if they don't, it's like a, a, a bad apple. So they have to apply, they have to go through that, they have to fit our values that we operate the company under. And if all those pass, we, we accept them. But you said what makes them up. They got to commit. I, we do a, a video that basically tells them the rules, if you will. And, and one of them is, I need to know that they're in this for 36 months and I need to know that they don't need to do a real estate deal tomorrow to pay the mortgage. Like if that's the case, I tell them, go fix that first. Get, make sure you get your cash flow fixed on your base overhead. Nice, and, nice and advice. And then come deal with us. Because I just, yeah, I don't want to give false hope. Uh, it's just too many people do that. Yeah, and that's that late night television. You get started for 50 bucks and all that. Right. You can't do that. You've got to have, you've got to be a substantial person already. Substantial in the sense that your life is already stabilized. You're not going through a divorce and you're looking at this is going to save your- A band-aid, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's not going to do that. So take me back to, to coaching for a little bit, if you will, and what your recommendations is and what you found from experience, because I'm a big advocate of coaching. I know that anybody that I've got that's done six figures, they had a coach. The ones that do a lot of 25s and $50,000 deals, they did it themselves, but they went, when they wanted to grow to the 100, uh, guess what? They got a coach. Yeah. And so I'm an advocate of that, but uh, I'm sure you are too. But give me a, a, some of your perspective on that, because I'm sure that the student and the listener would like to know more about that. Yeah, because some I think this is what you're asking. Sometimes people take just our video course and they'll go do some deals. Right. Uh, others will say, I'm going to take your video course because it's so inexpensive, but then I'm going to do a deal for us and then come and do some coaching. I just think it's a little bit backwards. And I, if you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that you could complete a deal, let's say in month seven, if you just knew that this is going to be a guarantee. And of course we can't guarantee that, but if you just knew that was going to happen, then you'd pull the trigger, meaning you'd find a way, maybe find a partner, maybe borrow, whatever you got to do. You'd find a way to get your foot in the door to any coaching program, yours, mine. I'm not so naive to think it's only the two of us. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there. Oh, so, of course. But, but it's, I'll give you a crazy facetious example. Ted, if you and I are in the front of the room and uh, we had an audience of, I don't know, 100 people and we pulled out a $100 bill and we said, look, whoever can pull out a $100 bill first and bring it up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double your return. I'm going to give you $100. There's nobody in that room that wouldn't go do whatever they got to do to find that if we offered that to every single person. Even if we gave them an hour to do it, they'd go find 100. So what's that have to do with what we just said? If you knew, if you're on a shadow of a doubt, you'd succeed by following a coaching program, whoever it was, you'd find a way to get in. It's that simple. And yeah. so we've got the proof all over the place. You've got the proof all over the place. And so that's what I'm talking about when I say with certainty. How do we get people commit to commit? That's the big question, isn't it? If they'll commit to doing something, they're going to be successful. If they won't commit, um, they're going to get halfway and they're going to stop or they need to go on vacation or they got, there's an excuse. It's a lot easier to make excuses. I've, I've noticed that myself. Okay, wow. now let's, we only have a few minutes left and I, I want you to, to just open up if you like to and you can tell us how you were able to take that business from basically 10 years ago, a, a disaster, which everybody went through that was in real estate. Fortunately, and I'm not bragging when I say this, we didn't go through that in the tax lien and deed business because we were already buying at 10, 20, 30 cents on the dollar. So that's where we came from. Whereas the poor people in real estate that had bought and spent 110% of value, now their value was down to 30. It was a, that was the crisis of all crises, no doubt about it. So take me a little bit, take me through that story, if you will, and tell me how you were able to go from that disaster in your life to where you are now. Obviously, you had a strong family. Yeah, we, so we talked about that piece of the story. That was super strong. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt that after 33 years of being married, I have the utmost support there too. So that's important. So the family team, the, the spouse component, and then the third component would be the mentor piece that you and I talked about. I didn't know how to scale past, let's say, a million dollar business because I don't want to water down doing a million for any business. But you and I both know it, you can muscle your way you can hustle, you can do more emails, more phone calls, more anything, and eventually get your way to a million. But to go from a million on up, it takes an entirely different skill set, entirely different leadership. So we seeked out, every year we, we seek out someone that we think we need to, to grow in the next year, but we seeked out a group that helps businesses go from seven to eight figures. They specifically concentrate on that. It's not just real estate, it's every business. And so every quarter we get together and that's all we focus on. So that has to do with values, culture, hiring, firing, challenges, problems. So this, without that, I put, I put a lot of weight on that and, and allowing us to grow being part of that group. Nice. So the smart real estate coach has a coach. Yeah, for sure, several. 
I love it. I love it. Isn't that? And unfortunately, that's uh, always expensive, isn't it? Even when you're the smart real estate coach, it's expensive. And yeah, people say, yeah, but you know what, Ted? I said this the other day to someone uh, relative to that, because that's a huge point, too. We, I can tell you, each mastermind group, and I know you feel this way, yeah. each group, every single one of those, I can attribute a quarter of a million dollars or more to each one of them. So exactly. it's, it's invaluable. Exactly. Exactly. And if you don't do it, you're bogged down in the trenches for your whole life. Not that it's bad in the trenches, but you don't get a chance to grow. And as you were, use the word scale, you don't have a chance to do that. Right. Okay, let's button up today. And uh, if you want to review any core values or anything like that, do that. And if you want to tell us a story about someone that was really successful, do that or do both, whichever you'd like to do. I'll just, I'll give you a quick story about the, about the gentleman I told you about in DC, because he did make the transition full time. He's 70, let's see, 20 years my senior. He's 73. And he has surpassed in 18 months, he's at about 18 right now, he has surpassed 1.4 million in all three paydays on his books. That's a pretty big feat. That is not, wow. for disclosure, yeah, not wow. the norm. Okay, I have a three year, $1 million plan I give people. He did it in 18 months. So that's a pretty wow. cool story. Wow, and tell me about the plan, what's his plan? We do a, if they put a note when they get the book, I'm happy to mail it out. It's, it's a one pager and it shows them how to, in three years, build a business that with three paydays is, is kicking out cash of $1 million, not accumulated paydays, actual cash, $1 million a year. So it's going to take three years. That's why I want people to commit to at least 36 months. And by then they'll have the bug and they'll stay with it. Okay, well, Chris, I'm running out of time. I've got one minute left, and it's all yours to brag about yourself. Tell us about your business, whatever you'd like to do. I don't want to brag. I do want to just reiterate that I don't care who's listening, and I don't care which niche they pick. I don't care if it's me, you, or anyone else. They can absolutely do it by getting the right mentor and just hunkering down. Good. That's terrific. And one more time about your family and what your family does. The family supports everything we're doing here. So they do deals in the field, and they then go do deals with students the exact same way. Okay, sounds terrific to me. Chris, great interview. I look forward to, to seeing you soon. Would you like to leave your web address I, uh, or give us an address to get that book, whichever one you prefer? Yeah, they can go to free, S-R-E-C, that's free, S-R-E-C, book.com. And that webinar I mentioned is you can jump over to just smartrealestatecoach.com. Wow, if every interview was like this, I could do this all day long. Terrific, it's uh, unbelievable. Good to talk with you and say hello to your family and I'll look forward to seeing you at your next event. Thanks, Ted, appreciate it. Hi, this is Linda. I'm sure you have questions from time to time. Ted will answer those questions. Just email info at tedthomas.com, then watch your email in the next 24 to 48 hours and you will have your answer.